In this video, we are discussing about safe portfolio. A safe portfolio ensures alignment and agility in our development initiative. We want to make sure that whatever we are producing is aligned with organization strategy and or, as the organization is changing their strategy, as we are discovering new things, we can also be flexible in our execution. Let's get into the details and see what is this whole safe portfolio is all about. In many organizations, you may have agility at a team level and your agile team might be working as a, as a, as a unit under an organization hierarchy. And you may achieve some amount of agility by having some amount of a product backlog and you are delivering things uh, incrementally and fast. But still, in many organizations, the control is still flowing through the hierarchy. And you might get budgeted and you are overall governed in a hierarchical system. So you have an agility at a team level, but this agility is not giving you overall organization aligned agility. Because this particular manager who might be controlling and, and guiding some set of agile teams might be taking input from various peoples and the input flow may be a little complicated. It may come from top to bottom and from sideways and ultimately this person may does some project ma uh, uh, portfolio management here, create set of projects, take an approval on those projects and then give a project to the development group and development group may execute it in an agile manner. Now, there is an agility in execution, but there is no agility in budgeting. There is no agility in strategic alignment because once you have a budget, this thing may get closed for next one year. So in order to bring this agility here, we need to give more flexibility to this particular team. In some organizations, when they have a big problem, which is, is blocking the development team to produce innovative and critical product, Sometimes they decide to make this team directly plug with the CEO office and, and they want to put it as an independent group who can take their decisions and produce an innovative and creative product. Uh, I, I feel that might be a good idea, but it is also having some scaling limitation. Till the time these teams are one or two, it might be okay to get managed with the CEO office. But when you have 100 such teams, then again, we need to bring some structure as CEO office will not be able to guide and, and mentor all these teams, and at the same time, putting these teams under a hierarchy may also block their agility. So what is the solution? Now, the portfolio uh, a layer or a portfolio concept of SAFE is, is giving us a view, an approach to have alignment and agility together. Let's see how it, it works. So we can say that we have collection of applications or solutions. So in a bank, a bank may have 100 plus products and applications which are maintained by their development group. Maybe 5,000 plus people are supporting that particular uh, set of applications. And we are saying that, okay, we need to create development value streams which will produce these, these, uh, these applications which will take end-to-end -end care of, of from requirement till uh, release, they will take care of, of these set of applications. So we form the development team, uh, development uh, value stream. And these development value streams are supported by agile release streams. So we can say that essential safe way of working is, is somewhere. We are saying that, yes, we have agile release train. Sometimes we have a one agile release train supporting one development value stream. Sometimes we can have two agile release train uh, supporting a particular development value stream. So we, we, we understood this structure when we looked into the essential safe. And these agile release trains, development value streams are maintaining the solutions uh, 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 for a, for a long-term view. Now, in order to create a management group, which guides, facilitate, and, and, and facilitate as well as align the, the development value stream effort to an organization objective, here we comes up with a group called portfolio. So it is like this. We can say that, okay, these three applications or these set of, of, of development value stream can go under a particular portfolio. The others can go into other portfolios. So like maybe, uh, other two can go somewhere else and we can have other two getting grouped uh, under the other portfolio. So we can, we can have a grouping of these set of applications and solutions supported by development value streams and agile release stream. And this group is called a, a safe portfolio. So I can have a safe portfolio, say uh, one here, 
And then these are like different, different portfolio. I have a one here, two here, and, and three here. Now, you may wonder, how do we group them? You know, we have so many applications. We need to apply some logic in order to group them because ultimately, this group will be, will be ensuring the strategic alignment, collaboration, funding uh, uh, of, of this particular whole uh, set of development value stream. One of the possible way of, of doing it is looking at your organization business line. And you may say, okay, in a bank, these set of applications are supporting, say, loan. Uh, these set of applications might be supporting credit card business, as another set of applications might be supporting retail banking business. And if the retail banking business is, is huge, you may want to split into two portfolios also, because at a portfolio level, also, you should have sufficient amount of of, of say collaboration. And, and if the number of, of trains coming under a one portfolio are, are more, the collaboration may, may get a, a little diluted. So in this particular example, I can say that, okay, the, the bank decided to go on operational value streamline and they created a one portfolio called loan applications. Yeah. So we have a loan applications as a one portfolio. Sometimes you may have, have a set of things, applications, which are supporting multiple business lines, many times in the infrastructure space. So you can have across the, the, the operational value stream portfolios as, as well. So as we understand, it's a, it's a group which of, of development value stream, maintaining set of applications, solutions, creating new products and solution in that particular group. And we give a one label called lean, uh, a, a, a portfolio, a safe portfolio. Now let's understand a little bit more what all might be going inside that particular group. So we zoom in into a loan application particular uh, portfolio. So here I can say that, okay, this particular portfolio is, is producing set of applications and these applications are getting, uh, are serving set of customers. Yeah. So we need to have some understanding of who are the customers, they could be internal or external who are getting served in a particular portfolio. So a group is, is clear that we have these applications, these set of customers are, are getting served. Yeah? You also need to work with some key stakeholders. Say, if you are supporting marketing related applications, you may have marketing business owners, stakeholders closely working with you. If you are working in a loan applications, you will be having loan organization part, the operational value stream, which is supporting, maintaining, issuing, creating new idea related to loan, closely working with, with you. So you will have key stakeholders, identified key stakeholders who are working with uh, 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 this particular uh, group. So at an organization level, you will say, okay, the loan application, these are the key stakeholders, these are the set of customers, these are the set of applications, and these are the set of agile release train, and this is a one particular uh, a portfolio. Now we can get further in, in, in detail, this particular group, a loan application group, a particular portfolio might be involved in some set of activities. So you can say that we can also list down and understand what all activities these, this particular uh, portfolio group is, is doing. So we can identify their key activities. So here I'm just giving some examples to, to show that, okay, these are the, the kind of characteristics which can make us more clear about a given portfolio. We can define in a similar way this, the, low, uh, the portfolio two, portfolio three, say portfolio two could be a credit card applications. And we may define who are the key stakeholder for credit card applications, what kind of a key activities this portfolio is doing, uh, what kind of a product and solution they are, they are producing and who are the, the, the people who are in the child release train supporting this particular uh, uh, portfolio. Now, after forming it, we need to also have a group who guides this whole movement, you know, creating this group uh, is, is, is the first effort. And then we need to have a, have a kind of mentoring, facilitating enablement, uh, a function which is done by this particular, uh, 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 there should be a body which is doing uh, that function for facilitating overall alignment and development for this particular group, say loan application. In case of SAFE, this particular group is called lean portfolio management. So we can say at a portfolio level, we can have a role called lean portfolio management. We can have a role called enterprise architect. And there could be another role called epic owner, which will come uh, based on the new initiative getting proposed in this particular uh, portfolio space. So lean portfolio management is, is a group. We, we don't have specific roles and responsibility inside that group defined. So in a, in a, it, is, it will be fair to assume there will be multiple people coming from business side 
coming from technology side, the delivery solution side, uh, 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 taking decisions, ensuring investment funding, ensuring alignment with with uh, with the organization strategy, and that is their key function. Yeah, that's and and that group is called lean portfolio management. Now, how they do it? Uh, say a portfolio should be working on various new initiatives. Which initiative they can work on? Lean portfolio management should provide facilitate evaluation of those various ideas to to ensure that we are working on on the thing which really matters. And when the ongoing work is going on, the ongoing work is happening at a at a release train levels and and other other places. Uh, so the lean portfolio management closely work with them to ensure whatever is is we are doing we are doing as per organization. A strategic expectation. Now, somebody will say, okay, how the lean portfolio management will come to know about organization strategies. So here you will have an organization as an unit, which is outside safe definition, and they are giving their strategic direction to the different, different portfolios uh, 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 so that they can execute and align their agile release train as per those strategic direction. Those strategic directions are called strategic theme. We will explore them as we go along in, in, in our subsequent uh, videos. So I come back to a, to a loan application uh, uh, a portfolio. So I have a lean portfolio management group, which is an overall uh, a facilitation governance alignment problem solving group. If my development team needs more budget, uh, a lean portfolio management will support me to, to, to get that particular uh, uh, budget. If a, a particular agile release train uh, uh, solutions which are coming out are not making expected business results, lean portfolio management is, is expected to, to, uh, to review and facilitate that review so that the adjustment can be made and we may uh, the, the particular agile release train may start working on something else rather than keep working on something which is not producing the, the, the desired result. So that's the lean portfolio management function. Now, at a portfolio level, we also have an enterprise architect. So you can say technological strategic view for that particular application groups, decisions, uh, uh, which technological decisions, technological explorations, which impacts the whole portfolio, facilitating the, the, the various problem solving as well as strategic alignment at a, at a portfolio level towards technology is the function of enterprise architect. Whereas an Epic owner, is, is the one who brings the new idea to the, to the lean portfolio management for, for their review, for their, for, for their approval, so that we can invest our more uh, uh, our energy or our agile release train time to do it. So that's the, the how we can understand these three roles at a, at a portfolio level. So in a simple language, it's a collection of applications which are managed by one group. And we have a group who is is, is taking accountability of alignment, accountability of support, accountability of providing strategic direction to the, to the, to the agile release trains and the, this whole development value stream so that we achieve organization objective. Now, a further definition of portfolio can be understood by looking at the portfolio canvas. So from scalealagileframework.com, you can see a tool called portfolio canvas. And this portfolio canvas, I'm just directly referring it from Scale Agile uh, website, has various columns and elements. And if you are at a stage of defining your portfolios, one, two, three, or different, different names, you may want to fill this portfolio to get a better understanding of, of the, 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 the boundaries and the roles a particular portfolio is, is going to play. Uh, the way we, we explored, many of the details are similar, but there are some additional details as well. So I can quickly uh, go through this particular uh, uh, thing and, and we can see. So you can give a name to a portfolio. Say I can give a name of say loan portfolio and then we can talk about it's a it's a, a frequently updated thing. So you may want to put a date and version on which you are, you are exploring it. You may want to list out all the development value streams which are falling under that particular portfolio. Say, low, say loan portfolio may have, have a development value stream uh, say application processing, customer acquisition, uh, or or you can say the credit uh, uh, review or or repayment uh, uh, thing or billing. So you may have all those applications or a development value streams, and then you talk about a set of applications which these development value streams are supporting. 
And then we talk about who are the customers. It could be internal or external customers. And we also talk about how do we deliver our product and solution to these customers? What are channel we use? So it, we might be doing, say, a web-based delivery. We might be doing phone-based delivery. We might be doing mobile-based delivery or, or a or face-to-face a -face delivery. So we need to have, a, have an understanding of it. And we also talk about how do we maintain customer relationship? It's a direct relationship or a, uh, a, there are intermediary. How do, we, how do we interact with the customer? Just to have an understanding at a portfolio level that, okay, we have these development value stream. These are the application, and this is the impact this application is making. And this is how for this application or solution, we are reaching to our end uh, a customer. The budget and KPI reviews, uh, KPI uh, revenues, this is something which will be uh, the ongoing update. So you can say that once the, the portfolio does the budgeting thing, and we will explore it in our subsequent video, this section may start coming in and say, okay, this is the budget a particular development value stream is, is, is taking for a given duration. So you, you, we will talk about budgeting as we reach there. Generically speaking, we talk about what are the key activities this portfolio is involved in, say development test, infrastructure support, so what all you do, what are the key resources they have. You may talk about uh, physical resources, human resources, infrastructure. You talk about all those things which are grouped under this particular portfolio in order to deliver their customer values. Who are the key partners? So vendors, compliance, say cloud partners, some outsourcing partners who are working closely with this portfolio uh, that, that can be defined. And what is your cost structure and what is your revenue stream? So cost structure is, is relatively easy to calculate because you have a resources, you have a other commitment, uh, you, you can calculate what all is expected to go in that particular portfolio. Revenue stream is, is depending upon if you are external focused portfolio, then you will have a revenue coming from the external uh, 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 customer segment. If you have an internal focused uh, uh, portfolio, then you might be focusing on the value you are delivering to your internal customer. And that may become uh, the indirect funding mechanism for your revenue stream. So again, this is something, a good starting point. It will get refined as you go along. Uh, many times when you start safe implementation, you start at an at a agile release train level. But once you have these agile release train set of application, you start forming the, the port uh, uh, folio. In subsequent videos, we will look into uh, the details like the portfolio vision. We will look into the budgeting part of the portfolio. And we will also talk about the, the overall evaluation of Apex with the help of portfolio Kanban system.